Hello everyone, welcome back to Trident TV. I'm going to do another computer video today. Just got back, I rode my bike to the flat iron, climbed it, just felt like making a video. So as you can see here on the screen, <clears throat> I have a program up called Logisim, which is a logic simulator, and some really smart people can build like entire computers on here. So as you see by the title, um, I'm going to show you how to make a seven segment display, which is right here on the right side of the screen. I'm going to show you how to make one of those work here in Lodge a sim. So without further ado, <clears throat> I'm going to show you what I have and then we're going to pull up my other circuit and um, yeah, we're going to go from there. Sorry, I got to pull up this other circuit here. There we go. So I got the other one pulled up and ready to go. All right, so I'm just going to show you a little bit about the numbering convention. You can number it however you want, but this is just the numbering system that I invented. I took a computer science class, I took some computer organization classes. And this was one of the assignments, and it's a really cool assignment, actually. Um, makes you think. So, on the right here, I have a segment se seven segment display, and all this is is just showing us what each input does when um, it is given a current or whatever. So, we're going to call this pin zero. We're going to call this pin one. The dot we're not going to use. I suppose I could, but I'm going to make another video. If I get enough likes on this video, so go ahead and smash the like button now. And if I get some subscribers, so go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to make another video for a three-digit, or no, a double seven segment, and it's way harder. This one's only like, I don't remember how many inputs, but we'll take a look at the circuits and we'll figure it out. But the other one was 1,400 different um, inputs. It was insane. It took me a long time to do, but I just, I don't know. Just felt like doing it one day. So, um, like I said, these are the inputs on the right, and then I'll show you what's light. So we're going to go ahead and show you. Right now I have a four, um, I have a pin with four inputs, which will get you, let's go ahead and pull up a, a programmer calculator, and we're going to use binary. We're going to give it 1111, which in um, decimal is 15. So yeah, you have 16 different um, possible outputs, I guess, with this system, but I only have it wired up for inputs um, 0, let's see, click on the program, yeah, input 0 through input 6, which gives us 7 possibilities, and yeah. So right now, if you know anything about binary, 0, 0, 0, 0 is 0, so that's going to go ahead and light up this top light as indicated over here on the right side. So we're going to go ahead and give it a value of 1, which is the furthest right bit and it's going to light up light 1. And now we're going to zero out the first bit, add 1 to the second bit, which is a value of 2. Binary numbers are 2 to the power of um, 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, etc, 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 and they work their way from right to left. So, we're going to give it a value of 3, we're going to go ahead and light up the third light, and then we're going to give it a value of 4, here's a value of 5, we're going to turn off the first bit, turn on the second, that's a value of 6. That is all of our lights. And with this logic, we can go ahead and um, make a circuit. It's a series of six circuits, actually, inside of a main circuit to go ahead and light up the seven segment display from zero to nine. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the um, seven segment display main circuit here. Oh, shoot, are we not recording? Weird. I must have done that because I pulled up the other one. Okay, so right now I have this system here. I'm going to go ahead and just show you how it works, and then I'm going to pull up each individual circuit and then show you exactly how to do them, and they're called truth tables, and that's how you're going to be able to design these circuits to do what you want to do. So right now I have all inputs of zero. I'm just going to go through this and tell you that um, pin or bit D is going to be the first bit from right to left, so that's just how it's organized, that's just how I did it. So lowest value is going to be on the bottom, and then highest value up here. This is 0 or 1, this is 0 or 2. Oh shoot, okay good, that's on. I thought my mic wasn't on. Okay, anyway, 0, 1, 0 or 2, 0 or 4, and 0 or 8. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a value of 1 with the first bit. As you can see, now it is showing the number 1. Pretty cool. Then we're going to give it a value of 2. It's going to go ahead and show 2. 3. We're going to turn off both of these. And then we're going to give it a value of 4. 
going to add 1 to that, 5. We're going to get rid of 1, add 2, we're at 6. Add 1 to that, we're at 7. Now I'm going to turn all three of these off. Give it a value of 8, and then a value of 9. How did I do that? Pretty simple, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. So what I'm going to do is, on the left here, you can see we have the main circuit. I'm going to double click on one circuit, and just to show you the numbering again, so I just called them C0 through C6, um, yeah, just means circuit 0, circuit 1, it's not really anything fancy. So, I just wanted to show you that again. So, for circuit 0, what we're looking at is this light up here, and what we're going to do is we're going to build a truth table. I'm going to go through it really fast, and then you can do it on your own and figure out if you can get it. Logic Simulator is free. I will go ahead and put a link to this software in the description of this video. So <clears throat> what you do is you basically build what's called a truth table for each individual light, depending on what number is going to use that light. So what you're going to want to do, if I have a notepad here, is you're going to want to draw out the light for every number and just list which light will go on. So I'm just going to go ahead and write the number 0, 1, and 2, and then you can go ahead. And you're going to want to know how they look in this display. It's just Google seven segment display, just so you can get an idea of exactly which lights are on. Um, so for 0, we're going to need lights. Go ahead and move this out of the side here. We're going to need lights 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. So we're going to build a truth table based off of that. And then for 1, all we're going to need is light 1 and 2, and then for 2, it's going to look like this. You're going to have lights 0, 1, 3, 4, and 6. So let's go ahead and double click on a circuit so you can see how the truth table looks. This is <clears throat> the circuit. This is circuit 0. This is what the exact circuit looks like. These are called end gates, or gates, and then I can't remember what these are. Okay, let's see if we can click on these. These are a NOT gate. So these basically just inverse whatever input was given to them. So effectively, this end gate is a NOR gate. <laughs> I might be wrong on that, but either way. So an end gate needs two inputs to be um, yes in order for it to output a 1. And then an OR gate just means any of the possible uh, inputs that are going into it will go ahead and output a one. What it is is it's called Boolean Algebra and it's one of the most annoying things you're ever going to do in your life if you ever go into computer science. Um, but we're not going to get into that. We're just going to get into what the circuit looks like. So we're going to go ahead and click on um, Analyze Circuit. And this right here is the Boolean Algebra um, equation. And it is the <clears throat> smallest equation to get all of these possibilities. So. Um, we just call it our inputs, A, B, C, D. That's exactly what you do when you design these circuits. You'll type in A, you'll hit add, B, add, C, add, D, add, and then outputs. We just call it Z or Z. My instructor um, was an East Indian lady and she called it Z. Most people in the world use Z as opposed to Z. It's just a technicality, but um, I distinctly remember how she said it. And so she's a really smart lady. Um, and this is what is called a truth table. So. It's exponential, so it gets way, way, way more complicated. This is from 0 to 15, if you know anything about bits. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up a programmer calculator one more time. Maybe you didn't know that, but the, the default Windows calculator, you can just click up here, click on Programmer. You have binary numbers, octadecimal. Um, you have decimal numbers and hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is base 16. Octadecimal is um, base 8. Binary is base 2, and then decimal is normal normal numbers, and it's base 10. Um, I believe I said that right. Either way, it's from, yeah, you get the numbers. You get from 0 to 9, so I guess that would be base 10. So if you look at the binary numbers, and like I said, if we, will, if we have 4 bits, because you see our 4 inputs here, A, B, C, and D, our highest possible output is a decimal number of 15. But in computers, you always start with zero. So this is actually 16 different possibilities. So this table is actually good for the outputs from zero to 16, but since we only have the lights available for zero to nine, we're only gonna focus on the first nine 
the last ones you could actually put a zero, but I think this software auto fills some things after a while, and that's why we have ones past the value of nine. So if zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are the only values that matter. So what you're going to do is you're going to go through and list out manually which lights need to be lit up for what number. And so for this one here, yeah, I'm confusing myself. Either way, you go ahead and build the truth table, <laughs> and then it'll go ahead and build this circuit for you, and then you go ahead and do that for each individual one as you go along. Just start with your inputs, start with your outputs, and then do the truth table based off of the binary number and if or if that light is on or not. If it's on, you give it a one out here. If it's off, you give it a two. So for the decimal number zero, you know, you just look at, oh, if I want zero to light up or the number zero to show, I have to give it these inputs. So after you go through and you go ahead and do that on all of your, um, circuits, you're going to need six, right? I guess you could do seven if you needed the period, but I didn't need to do that. So yeah, you build the truth table, you start with your inputs, you do your outputs, you do the truth table for each individual light, and I remember I call them C0 through C6, and then you go from there. So yeah, just edit a circuit. Some of them are more complicated than others. And and then what you do is, in your main circuit, you can just add whatever you have. And then this would be called C0, and you can give it a label. And then you can call it whatever you're going to call it, and go from there. And then all you do is, let's see if we can find the seven segment display. Yep, here's the seven segment display. So what you do is you pull that out. And based off of this mapping here, or you could use your own, you can number them differently, just stick to the same numbering and then your all your functions will work the same. And then what you do is you just wire up each um, input to the inputs on the circuit. And I believe, let's see here, east circuit name. Oh yeah, the circuit will spit out how many inputs it has based off of the boolean or based off of the inputs that you tell it. So if you tell it there's seven inputs, it'll show seven inputs. Um, I will give you a real quick sneak peek into the two seven segment display, and I I'm telling you this used some serious brain power. I had Excel spreadsheets. Um, let me go ahead and pull it up just really really quickly here. It's gonna be here circuits. Oh, it's on the desktop. Circuits, double seven segment. I'm just gonna give you a real quick sneak peek at what this bad boy looks like. Uh, this one counts from zero to 99. And I'll show you the Excel spreadsheet that I made for this. So you have your decimal number over here on the left. You have the tens digits here, which I just shifted that original equation, it's the same thing. You have things that repeat in patterns of 10. So if you look at a block this size, you can see that everything is basically the same in that area. And then the secondary light is your ones digit, so it goes from 0 to 9. So what you're going to have is these patterns that are 10 things long, but they're all different in between those 10 things. And you start to get the hang of it. I had a notepad. Um, yeah, so that I could type in the patterns over and over and over again. I was basically entering numbers in for a long time. So if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times two is 14, and you have zero to 99 is 100, it is 1400 different um, possibilities. Sorry about that. So anyway, that is a sneak peek at another video that I'm gonna make. Um, it's basically the same, but I'm just gonna show you real quick how crazy some of these circuits get. <laughs> Some of these are insane. You could not possibly do that. Yeah, you could not possibly work out the logic of that on your own. Crazy stuff. So, that is what you can end up with later on if you.
pay attention to this. And um, yeah, that is how you make a seven segment display work in Logic Simulator. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button, subscribe for more. I'll do more computer videos. I want to do a series on um, emulators and classic um, games and whatnot. I'm not going to talk about how to get ROMs. If you know how, that's great. There's a legality issue with that. If you rip them from games you own, that's great. Um, but yeah, I want to do a, a emulator series and I want to do a few more on computer stuff like that. Just random computer topics. If you don't like them, just smash like and skip them. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.